in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen grace and peace of our lord jesus christ be with you dear friends greetings to you all in the most precious name of our common lord jesus christ this morning i invite you to a very meaningful uh, theme uh, to do with uh, the children in our families children in our society children in our community at large perhaps children in our nation at large today we commemorate the world sunday school day by the entire christian community in the world celebrate this day and as a joy of solidarity we also take it as a theme nurturing our children in christian faith nurturing our children in christian faith friends uh, usually uh, this uh, sunday school day is celebrated on 5th of november because uh, in the year 1776 one uh, gentleman businessman in england called robert rikes uh, initiated uh, a movement called sunday schools because a lot of uh, rural children were uh, flooding into the city london uh, in want of uh, the jobs in want of uh, their food because of the poverty etc and not knowing what to do with uh, the children on the at homes uh this businessman thought you know a lot of uh, children of his workers uh, were simply idly spending at home so he thought of creating uh, a space for them to be to become busy so at that time taking uh, support from the local governor uh, one uh, gentleman mr thomas uh, he has initiated the sunday schools in 1776 to begin with at Gloucester and that became uh, a big movement around the world today even in villages you know in every nook and corner in every church you know we have uh, this movement of sunday schools uh, then later on of course a lot of development uh, vocational bible school uh, vbs what we call and children spend time in the vacations so on so forth hence today we remember children uh, become very important in the life of humanity and even in this creation when you put you know parallels to the children to the budding uh, you know flowers and fruit uh, in the creation and there is no difference between these two as much as you you know take care of these uh, plants you get wonderful beautiful flowers and the beautiful fruition that is helpful to the creation in this nature and they also look very beautiful very colorful similarly the children children uh, are the gift of god you know psalm is in 128 it says that children are the gift of god unless god gives the children you know the family is not complete it is in that context the united nations organization uh, has stipulated certain uh, mandatory principles that every nation in this world must abide like right to it exist every child has a right to exist you cannot uh, is that you know we showing a difference between a boy and a girl you have no right to kill them right to education every child must get educated the basic education right to good health you know, every nation has to create an agenda for the good nourishment of the children and for the nutritious food etc and the right to equal rights and equality for all children because children again are the gift of god friends you know in the scripture 
if it is not out of place uh, to mention that here and there you know in different occasions different contexts the children are children become predominantly important to that particular culture to that particular context you will find that to begin with in the book of exodus uh, the king ordered pharaoh ordered to kill all the male children from the hebrew uh, society or community and it was uh, you know it was so difficult for them to protect you know the male uh, species in that community uh, so also in the family of moses there was Uh, a kind of uh, commotion in the hebrews and uh, moses mother thought anyway the child would die so therefore she made a small uh, basket and uh, kept the child into that basket uh, and then left it in the uh, river nile and uh, you know surprisingly that child now uh, that basket uh, sailed uh, towards the daughter of pharaoh where she was bathing in river uh, uh, nile and uh, she found out this basket and then she asked them asked the basket to be brought she opened it and looked and saw a baby boy crying and she was uh, sorry for him and she decided Uh, let this child uh, be brought up within our portals and they found out that definitely this is a child uh, of one of the hebrews and then the child's uh, sister to pharaoh's daughter who was accompanying quietly watching at the basket uh, later on we know the name miriam miriam approached them as the child was crying uh, shall i go and find you a nurse among the hebrew women to suckle the child for you you find that the story in the second chapter of uh, book of exodus such a beautiful emotional and very sensitive uh, you know event and uh, the, to her the daughter of uh, pharaoh take the child away and suckle it for me she said when the mother has brought and that's how the relationship between the hebrews and the egypt the linking person moses uh, becomes the uh, connecting person between two cultures and his own mother brought him up not knowing uh, moses was unaware of the fact that the one who was suckling uh, milk uh, was his own mother and this is the context where uh, you know moses sister as a little one came closer to uh, you know to the history uh, in the process of bringing up of moses Shall I read it for you a small uh, portion from uh, Gospel according to St Matthew chapter 18 uh, first few verses and the title is who is greatest at this time the disciples came to Jesus and said who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven so he called a little child to him and said the child in front of them then he said i tell you solemnly unless you change and become like little children you will never enter the kingdom of god and so the one who makes himself as little as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven jesus was focusing on the children as i already said with the story of miriam and because of her intervention a child was protected saved and grown to become moses one of the greatest liberators in the history of the uh, human society children here and there you will find uh, you know playing important role in the second book of uh, kings you will uh, find when um, uh, what is his name uh, uh, the army Ar- army and uh, army head after uh, the great war against israel after conquering the israel they have looted lot of uh, you know properties etc 
and here is a man who took a little child from uh, Israel maybe to be used as a domestic servant or a maid in the house you will find that in the second book of kings chapter 5 naaman naaman uh, uh, unfortunately he was a commander of the king of aram uh, but he had leprosy now on one of their raids the armenians had carried off from the land of israel a little girl who had become a servant of naaman's wife and later on you will find uh, that one day the child said uh, to her uh, you know madam and she said uh, we have a prophet in our own land so if you know his wish sir naaman can go and get himself killed so that's how she advised though initially he did not uh, listen to her what is this this girl uh, you know directing but then towards the end the result is that naaman was healed and it was the girl who directed him for the whole act of uh, healing towards uh, the prophet prophet uh, uh, elias elijah and this is how uh, you know the children play important roles in the scripture when it uh, comes to prophet uh, jeremiah one of the greatest uh, class two classical prophets along with uh, isaiah and jeremiah in his uh, soliloquy he feels that you know he was too young for god to use him as a child the word of yahweh was addressed to me the very beginning of uh, book of jeremiah first chapter fourth verse before i formed you in the womb i knew you before you came to birth i consecrated you i have appointed you as prophet to the nations plural nations then jeremiah said and oh lord yahweh look i do not know how to speak i am a child but yahweh replied do not say i am a child go now to those to whom i send you and say whatever i command you do not be afraid of them for i am with you to protect you it is yahweh who speaks god speaks through children that is what we hear even in the you know in the context of uh, uh, book of uh, samuel you will find when samuel was called it was uh, you know uh, the child who hears the child who was brought by his uh, mother and left with uh, you know the high priest elia elai and um, hana his mother left him there but god called you know the little child and that was a very very fantastic uh, uh, story very emotional god calls him god calls him samuel she has given a name which simply means in hebrew beautiful samuel el god samu beautiful and she took him and uh, then left at uh, prophet eli and god calls god calls him and that was a very momentous time wherein he becomes one of the greatest prophets on earth and to coronate two kings not an ordinary thing you know a prophet uh, choosing two kings the first two kings saul and uh, david in first two occasions he didn't realize samuel then eli uh, tells him realizing that god was calling him and then as per the direction of his master and he responds here i am since you called me speak to me lord god calls him by name samuel samuel a beautiful child speak yahweh your servant is listening look at the tenderness of this child and then he becomes you know the agent of such an important religious act of creating a new tradition new culture in the history of israel that he has coronated first king saul and followed by king david
as a little child he entered into the ministry god called him god spoke through the little children in the second book of chronicles you have uh, you know there is a great history of the children in the from the scriptures second book of chronicles chapter 24 of course it is a duplicated uh, chapter from second book of kings also chapter 22 23 where josiah becomes a king you know at what age josiah became the king like that of king emperor akbar in our nation he became at ninth year but here i read it for you 34th chapter second book of chronicles josiah was 8 years old when he came to the throne and he reigned for 31 years in jerusalem he did what is pleasing to yahweh and followed the example of his ancestor david not deviating from it to either to left or to the right a straight forward king from 8th year who committed himself friends i always admire joseph from his childhood among all the 12 sons and joseph became the distinct and unique personality from his childhood god chose him like that josiah who brought lot of reforms in the history of uh, israel centrality of worship in the jewish culture in the new testament of course we have in st john's gospel 6th chapter when jesus was so moved with the you know the people who were fo- who are following him he wanted to give them food and he asked for you know in any bread available and philip and andrew were looking here and there they brought a young a little lad and they found out a little lad who had five you know barley loaves and two fish which became source for how many 5000 people <laughs> a little lad who become the source of their food to feed, feed their hunger friends in the proverbs uh, book of proverbs 22nd chapter a very central theme for the children to occupy the forefront it says train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it train up a child in the way he should go you know i was talking about the little plants that are planted it you know when the plant is bending you will keep a stick to stick to it bind it so that the plant will go up right neither to left nor to right like josiah like joseph train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it in the third epistle to uh, from uh, John uh, John's third epistle uh, only one chapter of course fourth verse it is read written like this I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth children walking in truth I have no joy than to hear that my children walk in truth friends these are the biblical basis and biblical passages wherever the children are here and here is an event when the children were available and jesus took them to show them who is greatest among all children who are innocent who are not yet contaminated who have not become dirt in their minds you know they are not clever they are not trickish you know they are not wicked they are not evil they are simply as white as the white paper or a white cloth and later on as they grow because of the you know onslaughts in this uh, uh, human movement in the society quite possible there are other spots that appear on the white ness of their mind they are innocent they are innocent friends i want to quickly look at you know the ministry among children is very precious the mother is the first teacher as the child grows in the womb it is mother who speaks to the child though child is invisible 
physically outside but every mother i know it's an experience even when no one is there to talk to the mother in silence she speaks to the child sometimes i wonder whether the babe in the womb listens yes the history tells like you know in history abhimanyu you know listens to what all uh, uh, that happens in uh, his mother's mind she grasps many stories many children who are brought up in religious atmosphere mothers are the first teachers mothers pave the way for the children friends children are the image of god is my first observation god has created the humanity in his likeness and in his image means not with physical features but it is the the mute and the zalem are the two hebrew words used are nothing but it is the goodness of god and it is the spirit of fellowship of god the likeness and image with that you know meaning we should understand that every child who is born in respect of your other you know attachments in this world is in the image of god john the baptist when refers to jesus he was only 6 months younger to him jesus was 6 months younger but john shows to him saying here is the lamb lamb is means the lad a young fellow behold the lamb of god talia the hebrew word is a lamb that means john sees 100% purity on the face of jesus the innocent manova in the old testament along with his wife dedicates the child you know names him samson samson to become servant of god there was a perversion in the in the growth of this child unfortunately but god has created every child with the purity of mind which we will we'll see it in the st luke's gospel according to st luke you know the joy of the parent explaining about uh, the child uh, who was to you know be brought up first chapter on the 11th verse follow then the angel appeared to you know uh, zechariah and then addresses zechariah do not be afraid your prayer has been heard your wife elizabeth is to bear you a son and you must name him john he will be your joy and delight and many will rejoice at his birth and he will be great in the sight of the lord how many children bring joy how many children make parents delighted and then how many children grow great in the sight of god god has created each child with the same value same purity but there are only a few who grow with this same purity and then give the joy you know to the parents and to them at one point jehreya in the benedictus you know he is so delighted to uh, to Uh, explain or depict the characteristics of his son and you little child you know the first chapter verse 76 you little child you shall be called prophet of the most high for you will go before the lord to prepare the way for him to give his people knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins in one of the villages as i was traveling visiting one senior man came with the photo saying you know with the, the then president and behind him there was a very smart young officer standing he was not bothered to show the president to me he said the person who was standing behind him a sturdy man aya this is my son son who stands behind the president of course he is also an, an officer in army and who is appointed to be the guard to the president but he is important to the father 
A president is not important to him. To Zechariah also, his son is very important. He says, you shall be called prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord in preparing the way for him. So, my son will prepare the way for Lord. So, Lord follows later. But my son is important to me. Every child is important to the parent. Every child is important to the parents. Friends, my second observation is children are the blessing of God. Children are the image of God. Children are the blessing of God. One of the greatest and very fabulous, meaningful, you know, psalms that every family must recite and get it by heart is Psalm 128. Psalm 128 talks about the blessings of the you know, family. He says, your children round your table like shoots round olive, like olive tree. I have an olive plant. For one year I have been, you know, grooming, but still it has not come up. But once it comes, I know it will grow like, you know, such a beautiful plant. In Israel, in all, you know, Arab countries, you will find olive shoots come up like anything, you know, like wild growth. They are very precious. And uh, when I took pastors to Holy Land uh, on uh, Mount uh, Tabor, one pastor suddenly, quickly, he wanted to pluck the, you know, the branch, thinking that he is getting free of cost a souvenir to take it to India. But there was a shout from a bearded man, Stop it! Shock all of us. Why are you touching that plant? It is holy in this land. Don't touch it! Olive. <laughs> Same thing. Even if you have 12 children, if you touch one children, the father gets angry. Why are you touching my child? Because he is my child. Olive shoot is our plant. Therefore, your children are like round your table shoots round an olive tree. And such are the blessings you will find everywhere around the, you know, table. They are our children, they are blessing of God. Friends, it is in this context you will find children, they carry the message of salvation because they bring joy and exhilaration to the parents. The third observation of mine is that children are the channels of God's peace. Even in the brokenness of a mother, a mother who is deserted, a mother who is bruised in her life, perhaps in the family, but she clings to the child and takes the child to her bosom and she receives peace. In the warmth of the touch of the child, she receives peace. And it is the case of every mother, every mother, because the children are the, are the peace of the family. And children are those who bring peace. They are the channels of peace. Friends, uh, it is in the context of these features that children as the image, children as the blessing of God, and children as the channels of God's peace. And I would like to look into the other side of the you know, reality of the life of the children. Children, they bring God's message. They speak to us. God uses them as the prophets, as the servants, as the channels. And we find here children everywhere around our lives. Not only positive, there are negative shades around them. 400 million children in this land do not have a rightful, a healthy, a pleasant life. One or the other child don't have food, they live in hunger. And there are millions of children malnourished. Their children don't have proper health facilities. They don't have pure drinking water. Children work in mines, children 
girl children particularly work in cotton cross in the western part of uh, uh, southern india exclusively girl children are used and that is very dangerous children are for sale and there are children even in the tender age you know they are kept on the road sides to be used as sex commodities they are transgender children children particularly working to break the stones to carry the stones in the mines they are run away children children those who are missing or lost amartya sen nobel prize winner from india he says there are millions of children who lost who are lost missing will you be able to find them discover them it's a very special ministry my dear friends ministry of street children ministry of migrant children those who come away from villages for a better life escaping themselves from the step father or step mother or they become orphans you know sometimes in the middle east some of our children from india are bought you know why for their joy and merriment to be kept and tied to the camels for the camel race through early morning and in the midst of snow breaking the thick snow they have to be exposed on the back of the camels some die at the end of the game only a few are alive lord jesus went to the little child in mark 5th chapter 35th verse follow they thought the little child is died but then jesus went and he said little girl arise our lord came into this world to touch every child make them rise make them rise and he is there as a solace we are grateful to those great missionary women who came into our own context in any every region there are you know great ladies who came in my own context chade sharki stalls heloni haini you know these are great teachers you know they have come from different countries from america from england from uh, finland they have come here thousands and thousands of girl children have gone out of their portals well educated and well equipped well nourished these missionaries have seen they discovered and you know, they prioritized the right to exist and right to education hobart schools everywhere in south india giving education to every girl child friends they are the, the channels of joy channels of hope channels of peace they have every right for education you know in india there is a slogan you know beti bachao and beti padao how many betis are bachao how many are saved millions of girl children are living like thorn leaves in the recent week the story of hatras a young little girl you know was raped and killed and there is no justice given even at now in this part of history like that how many thousands in each of our state in india you know who are lost and who lose their dignity the beauty integrity of their lives which god has given them it is like in the ecological sense the beautiful flowers are plucked and thrown out and crushed by the wealthy and arrogant section of the community it's a great tragedy my dear friends and we it is in our hands how to give them the solace how to bring them the liberation to these children every child is you know bringing a great joy to us 
they are the like olive shoots and then the fourth for next verse says in psalm 128 such are the blessings that fall on every family who fears yahweh every child is important to us and finally he says may you see jerusalem prosperous and live to see your children's children you know again children are important it is the children who have to see your prosperity it is your children who have to receive your tradition it is your children who will continue that great culture which you have created if you had created a culture of violence children would learn if you had created a children of peace they are the you know channels to carry on this peace they are children who are shivering millions in this country hiding their lives can't speak they became silent in the culture of silence their voice is crushed in great cities you know how many children their kidneys are removed you know sometimes their limbs you know are cut off because they will be thrown out as beggars in the city and there are big bosses behind them collecting by evening what all they get oh unbearable no voice it is in this context a lot great institutions like red cross world vision you know lot of i have seen from catholic uh, organizations and child care centers advocacies they are able to extend care to the children the biblical background is such that that god will not forsake these children but god teaches us and uses us as instruments and we need to be used as the right instruments in the hands of god to protect our children their tender no violence no physical touch and it is by word of god that you express counsel teach them mold them train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it my dear friends let us look with a new direction with a new perspective that every child is god's angel placed in our families you only discover the smile of god on their face never try to see the tears on their faces it is in this context may all the children in this land be a great blessing not only to our land but also to the entire humanity shall we pray remember your child in the prayer today all your children by name lord of grace lord of life lord of every child in our family oh lord we thank you immensely for these children that you have placed them within our families as a very special gifts and you have bestowed them as boons powerful arrows as the source of great joy peace lord we pray that you lay your hand upon them in the process of their growth oh lord may we be used as instruments to prepare them and bring them up at your holy feet oh lord as the worthy children and witnesses in the years to come may the smile always on their face will continue in jesus name we pray amen may the grace of our lord jesus christ love of god and the continued fellowship of the holy spirit be with you and all the children always amen